So, hey, Virginia. Hey. How we doing? Good. Again, Virginia is with Formlabs, um, super cool tech company that is uh, making amazing products um, in 3D printing. So, can you talk about your role at Formlabs, how long you've been there, and what you guys do? Sure. Um, I'll start with what we do, so it's kind of easy to tie up. We design and develop desktop 3D printers and the whole ecosystem around it, so also software and materials. So we're first and foremost an engineering company, uh, but we do everything else as well. We do sales, support, design, marketing, ops, finance, legal, anything you can possibly imagine. Um, I'm head of people, so I don't know what that means, but it basically means hiring people nonstop. I've been there four years. I joined when we were 10, and now we're 194 as of today. Um, what else was the other question? So you're in, until the robots take over, you're, you're, in, you're in charge of all the human <laughs> beings. Uh, yeah, sort well, it, it's a team. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just me. Totally. <laughs> yeah. um, Cool. So Form Labs, the story. You guys started five years ago out of uh, out of MIT in one of the labs. When did you make the move to Somerville, and what were the the main factors for for setting up shop here sure. as opposed to staying in Cambridge? Yeah, it's uh, it's not 100% accurate. The co-founders met at the Media Lab, but we're not officially affiliated with them. Um, basically, they graduated and they thought we're not going to have access to 3D printers anymore. Okay, we're just going to make our own. Um, and it, then the company really formed in, uh, you know, Cambridge basement, basement co-founders, parents, basement kind of situation. Um, and then by the time it was three people moved to Industry Lab because it was cheap. It's just right across the line in Cambridge is cheap. They had small spaces. Uh, co-working spaces are awesome. We probably couldn't have started without support like that. Uh, but then we outgrew that space pretty quickly. And by the time we were 15 people, we knew we needed more space. and. Uh, we just didn't want to go to Kendall. Uh, we didn't want to go to Boston. We looked at spaces all over, uh, but Somerville just felt right. Uh, everyone, not anymore, but at the time, everyone at the company basically lived in Somerville. <laughs> Somerville is affordable. And uh, we were very lucky. There were lots of options in Somerville, and we looked at stuff right here. We looked at the <laughs> Scott TV building. We looked in Davis Square. We looked at all this stuff um, and then landed very luckily, just down the street, 35 Medford, like right across from the Target parking lot in a building that was, I don't know, half vacant when we moved in. And then the last two and a half years, we've taken half the building. Okay. Um, so you, there's a few um, of the original Formlabs printers at Arden's Asylum, I believe. And Ooh, time to upgrade. <laughs> sprinkled thr throughout the rest of the community. What... Um, you have global reach and distribution, but how are you thinking about local community partnerships and collaboration? Yeah, we, we definitely think about it a lot more than we did when we were smaller. <laughs> hmm. When we were smaller, we were basically just heads down trying to make the business work, trying to make the product work, trying to make sure we could do payroll and everything wouldn't completely fail. Um, but now that we have a bigger team, we actually can spend more time in the community and we donated four printers and one of them ended up, I, I think in the spring, there'll be like a fab lab at Somerville High School, which is awesome. The rest are ending up in like JP and Dorchester and somewhere in Boston. Um, we're gonna do an internship program with Somerville High School. They have like a technical, like high school internship program, which I think would be pretty cool to partner with. Um, we used to do a program with Cambridge Ringe and Latin as well. Um, but in terms of just connecting more with the community, we definitely do a lot more partnerships. Like Somerville is our home. We love this place. We go to the Somerville Maker Fair. Like I think one time we even were at like Fluff Fest just because someone said we could be there, so we showed up with a printer and some parts. Um, Did you guys make some crazy stuff? Not particularly for that, but in general we do make a lot of crazy things. Yeah. Um, but now that we have um, a bigger space and more space, one thing that we do now that we could never do before in a co-working space is we invite people in. So sometimes we host meetups or events. And we have a few that we're going to start and we'll definitely want to do more of that. Got it. Um, you guys are growing like crazy on one side is the, uh, the team, team side. You're yeah. scaling up. Um, there's a ton of, you look at the Formlabs website and there's jobs in every department. Um, so yeah you're probably involved in a lot of that. So what are the top skill sets you're looking for and if people are curious about a certain that, position? Yeah, that question is 
it's hard to answer. Um, we literally do everything at the company. Like, if you are really good at whatever you do, there's a good chance it's probably relevant to something we're doing at Form Labs. Um, I think that we've been just very fortunate in the last couple years to basically be able to hire people who are great and make them fit because we need so many things. But obviously, we're looking for mechanical and electrical and software and anything technical. Like I said, we make our own materials. Um, our sales team is growing faster than anything else because we're selling the printer, and then we got to sell more, and then we got to support it, and then we got to sell more so that we can hire all the engineers. Um, but really, literally, we've been very lucky to just be able to talk to people who are very talented and figure out something for them to do, um, unless your talent is something completely niche, like juggling. I mean, I don't know. We used to have someone who juggled, but not full time for their job, just as a side gig. Side gig. Um, yeah. But we're going to hire about 100 people in the next year. And yesterday, we raised $32 million. Ooh, so congrats. we got to spend that on something. We're yeah. going to spend it on people and probably more space. OK. So um, do you guys still consider yourself a startup? I think in ethos and spirit, but definitely lots of things have changed since we were 10 people. Mm -hmm. um, very informal talk across the table, sit around the room. What hire were you? Uh, 10. 10, OK. Yeah. Um, I would still call us a startup in, in ethos and spirit. I think that um, th like the last little bit of this panel, people were talking about like culture and how do you kind of identify who you are and talk about who you are. It's funny, we, we haven't done that <laughs> yet. We just still going by the seat of our pants. Um, but I would say that we still feel like a startup in many ways. I mean, we have some of the benefits of being a bigger company, like space and resources. And if we need to buy a tool, we can actually buy it now. And we still buy stuff used on Craigslist all the time. Like, we're still scrappy. Uh, we don't have an org chart. We do have some organization. But we don't have like strict jobs with rules and descriptions. Like, we're still very fluid in lots of ways. And I'm really proud that that's something that we've kept as we've gotten bigger, because I think when you start to stretch beyond you know, just 10 or 20 or even 50 people. There's a tendency to want to layer in a bunch of process, because that's what lots of big companies do. And there's kind of a norm for that. But um, I think if you figure out what works for your organization, you can kind of keep it whatever way you want it. But yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of things that we're, we have some debt for that we need to catch up on. Mm -hmm. I asked about the, uh, the startup um, identification, because here with startups, do you hire for aptitude or attitude? Both. And yeah, has that changed as the company has grown? And where would you say you, do you lean towards one over the other at no, this point? No, not really, honestly. Like, attitude is really important. Like, we hire for cultural fit just as much as we do skill. But um, pretty much everything we do is technical to some degree. So, again, you have to be super skilled at whatever you're doing, even if it's, um, you know, ops and an administrative job, even if it's sales or if it's design engineering, you still have to be insanely skilled to kind of get through the door. But you're not going to be a fit for the team if you're also not just a great person to work with. Uh, one thing that has changed since we've gotten bigger is we hired a lot more generalists when we were small. And we would let people have 10 different jobs, you know, operations, people operations, business development, you know, whatever. People could kind of do 20 different things. And that's definitely is still the case for probably too many people. Um, but now we're at a point where we do have things we want to hire specialists for. Like, we really want to hire an optoelectronics engineer. That's a very specific thing that you actually have to study and be a true expert in. Um, so it's nice to have the freedom to do that. But when you're smaller, you can definitely just find people who want to do anything. And if they want to be at the company, they can do lots of great things. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, let's open it up for the. Audience, I think Ben has a question. Sure, Ben. It's pretty fluid, honestly. I mean, I, I, I'll speak to my own path, I did like 10 other different jobs at Form Labs, and at any point I could have gone more towards something user facing or product or marketing or support or sales, all things I was quite good at, and I loved being in front of customers. Um, but ultimately, it was too big a job to do all the five of those things and whatever else I was doing, and I kind of 
decided just to focus on the people and the space, and then the company kept getting bigger and bigger, so the problems get bigger and bigger, and now I, I don't miss the customers anymore. <laughs> so I, I think we've always been really fluid about it, even, even now, if we have someone on a team who, however they wanna grow is not necessarily like what that team is really needing. They already made it to form labs. They're already great at one thing. They're probably great at five things. So we kind of let people play around and work on more than one project. And we're very fluid with like team boundaries, um, very intentionally. There's no like a form they have to fill out with HR, anything like that. <laughs> you told me uh, you don't, there's no HR department, right? You yeah, we, we don't call it HR. I mean, people operations uh, stolen from Google. It's just this like much friendlier philosophy that's more people first and less protect the company first. Um, it does also fill classic HR functions, but just from a, honestly, a different perspective of thinking about thinking about people first and not just uh, protecting the company. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a little bit of protecting the company in there too when needed. Especially when you raise 32 million. 32 million dollars, <laughs> can't believe it. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Yeah. Congrats on that. Thanks. Um, one last question. Yeah, I mean, yeah, d definitely as you get bigger in whatever way it is, bigger in sales, bigger in headcount, bigger in space, like at some point you have to have more, more process in place. And when you're starting your own company or you work at a small company or startup, like process is usually the last thing that you want to do ever because you just want to get stuff done. Um, but sometimes processes like exist in the world for a reason and like, they kind of make things work. Like one, one thing that we have honestly struggled with is at two, pretty much 200 people and we have an office in Berlin, how do we really share what's going on in the company with everyone all the time? I mean, the truth is you can't. You can't share the same fidelity of information you share when you're 20 people or two or five. Um, you have to like figure out what you're gonna do. Do you have town halls? Do you have, OKRs, you have like quarterly company meetings, do you have a newsletter? Like there's so many different ways you can kind of approach that problem, but there's probably a process behind it. Yeah. Great, thanks Virginia. Ooh, so fast, okay, you're welcome. Worst. Um, do you wanna add any, I've asked everyone, where can we find you? We know where the office is, but um, will there be Formlabs pop-ups? Where can they mm. play around with the printers? Well, uh, we definitely have, I think they're Form 1 pluses at Artisans, but we should definitely turn those into Form 2s because the Form 2 the latest is, and greatest, Form right? two is really okay. works really well. Um, God, there's so many printers all over the place. Frankly, I don't even know where they all are. Um, okay. But if anyone is interested in using a printer or getting a demo or whatever, um, you can just reach out to me you know, today or grab me, and uh, I would be happy to hook you up at the office or you can come to a come to a happy hour or something like that we can give you like a demo Thursday what are the Thursday? yeah Fo every foam labs we really like puns foam okay. labs at form labs yeah every Thursday at 6 30 okay yeah great thanks so much thanks yeah